All right. Good afternoon, everyone. And welcome to New Hampshire Business Businesses for Social Responsibility's final webinar of 2011, Corporate Social Responsibility 2.0 and Beyond, The Next Challenges and Opportunities for Corporate Leadership. Um, I'm Michelle Vesey, and I am the new Executive Director of NHBSR. First of all, I'd like to thank Fairpoint Communications for their sponsorship of this webinar series. Their ongoing support is valuable to both NHBSR and our members in providing educational opportunities for busy professionals. Um, at the end of the webinar, you're going to receive an email. Um, and I encourage you to share your ideas for future webinars, as well as your feedback on today's presentation. As you may know, NHBSR is a not-for-profit statewide membership organization that fosters socially and environmentally responsible businesses in New Hampshire through educational, networking, and marketing opportunities for our members. We're always looking to expand our sustainability networks, so if you find today's presentation valuable, please feel free to share the recording that will be on our website under Programs and Services and Webinars with your networks. I also encourage you to join us next month at Breakfast with the Best. This is the 15th year of establishing the best companies to work for in New Hampshire. Business New Hampshire Magazine and NHBSR are celebrating it with a special program, one which includes dynamic speakers and facilitators adept in creating a culture that, that attracts the best and brightest employees. It promises to be a great program. I'd like to introduce you to Robert Eichardt. Uh, principal in People Sense Consulting and today's webinar uh, moderator. Thanks, Robin. Thank you, Michelle. It's great to be here and to have everybody um, on board here today. I know everybody's time is valuable. We definitely appreciate you making the choice to spend the hour with us today. Um, a few housekeeping things. So Michelle, I noticed, at least on my screen, I didn't see the slides going through. I know you had prepared a few. Um, so I didn't see those going through, and I'm not sure if it was me or others, and so if, if there we go, perfect. Oh, my apologies. No, that's quite all right. I just wanted to make sure, especially if it was me and if other people were seeing them, so that's, that's great. So just a few housekeeping things before I introduce our speaker for today. Our agenda is full. We have about 30 minutes of a presentation planned by Phil, but we, um, of course, we are planning to be here for until 1 o'clock, but we want to make sure that we incorporate time for your involvement and participation through questions and answers and discussion. So even though your particular voices right now are muted, it's really as a convenience so you don't have to worry about your background noise and your own environment. But we really do encourage questions and your um, contributions towards the topic. You'll notice the control panel on your screen with the chat box. So as you have questions or comments, absolutely we encourage you to enter those in the little message box there. Uh, my role will be one to um, watch for those and, and involve Phil in helping work through some of those questions and answers for you. And if possible, if you've uh, logged on via your telephone or you have a microphone, we might um, be able to unmute you so you can ask directly to um, work on that. We also are going to be, as you know, recording this uh, presentation so that it's going to be available on the NHBSR website afterwards. Where it would be a great way to um, involve participation from others that you may know who weren't able to, to be with us here today. So I really am excited to introduce to you Phil Suter who is the principal at River Tide Consulting, and he's going to be speaking with us today on this really important topic that I think all of us have interest in, Corporate Social Responsibility 2.0 and beyond, the challenges and opportunities for corporate leadership. Uh, a little bit about Phil. Um, he is a strategic management communications consultant with offices in both Portsmouth and Peterborough, so he's got both sides of the states covered. His consulting practice was formed in 2003 known as the River Tide Group. Phil offers planning and other management consulting services to companies, communities, and causes. He focuses on inviting shareholder input and feedback on organizational issues and initiatives. He has a BA in political science from Colorado, Colorado College. 
and an MBA from UNH. He's strongly connected to New England, born in Vermont, raised in Massachusetts, and has lived in both Maine and New Hampshire. Um, his professional life spans public, private, nonprofit, and education sectors. He really has an interesting background in that he served as a diplomat in the Foreign Service. Not everybody can say that. <laughs> um, he, he has worked in advertising and marketing in the private sector as well as high tech. He served as an executive director for two statewide New Hampshire new profits, nonprofits. And for nearly a decade, he's taught strategic management and social responsibility at the Whittemore School at UNH. So an awful lot of expertise in a wide variety of settings, which, uh, as we all know, um, really deepens the, the expertise. And so we're really happy that Phil agreed to be here with us today. So Phil, I am. Um, anxious to hear what you have to say. Well, thank you very much, Robin, and uh, good afternoon, everybody. Uh, thank you also to Michelle for uh, your technical support. Uh, I've uh, made the appropriate offerings to the technology gods for the next hour, so hopefully we'll uh, we'll all be up and running. Uh, Robin did mention that there is the ability to. Uh, uh, ask questions, uh, and there is the chat box. And just as a personal style, I don't mind being uh, interrupted with a question uh, if you have one. So to the degree that you uh, uh, are good at the technology, feel free to do that. We will have some time at the end uh, to uh, entertain with questions. So if you want to wait until then, that's fine too. Uh, this is a big topic. And this first came up about uh, in October of 2010, and those of you who follow uh, corporate social responsibility, sustainability, citizenship issues, uh, know that things change every day. In fact, if I have to give you this presentation next week, it probably will be a little different than it is today. But there's a lot to cover. It's a little uh, like getting in the uh, back to the future vehicle and or maybe taking a sip of water from a fire hose, but uh, let's get started. Uh, why this topic? Uh, I, I have a feeling, and it's uh, borne out by some uh, evidence, that CSR and sustainability has reached a kind of a tipping point. I think 2010 was the year of the tipping point and the year that we transitioned into CSR 2.0. I'll try to trace that back a little bit and, and provide some historical context. Uh, we're going to whip through uh, about a hundred and, I don't know, a lot of years uh, in about five minutes. So that won't take long. And we'll spend a lot of time on, uh, on 2010 and uh, 11. This is the uh, overview of the presentation. I do have the year as 1010. We are not going back that far. Uh, but we'll have the historical context, five things that happened in 2010, what does CSR 2.0 look like, some challenges that presents for leadership, and some ideas for corporate action. As I said, the uh, sense of the sustainability tipping point in 2010 and the increasing ubiquity of CSR, the CSR conversation has added to the legitimacy of, of the subject. Most people believe now, I, I think, that uh, there's no turning back on CSR sustainability. It's something that is uh, increasingly important locally and globally as a matter of competitiveness. But there is a tremendous amount of uh, information, print, web, uh, and all kinds of other platforms. Quick historical context. I'll, uh, Say a brief thank you to uh, my friend and friend of NHPSR, Bruce Mass, for reminding me about uh, the Tocqueville. Uh, but really, the, the, some of the root of CSR is in his uh, Democracy in America observations with the uh, what he called the doctrine of self-interest, rightly understood, is sometimes uh, known today as uh, properly understood. But essentially, it said that Americans, it was his observation that Americans uh, easily and without uh, complaint, sacrifice both time and property for the welfare of the state. Uh, the conversation 
he picked up again uh, about 100 years later uh, with Peter Drucker and when he talked about the impact of management's decisions on society in a book uh, in 1954 called The Practice of Management. Uh, and he actually did talk about social responsibility and the fact that uh, there were some societal issues that mattered. Uh, he, his thinking evolved over uh, several years. Uh, and his next major book, Frontiers of Management, which had several printings, uh, emphasized that the first responsibility of social responsibility was to uh, uh, make enough profit to cover future costs. And, and he uh, added by saying that social responsibility is therefore really needed to be uh, built into the business strategy. This is something that uh, companies are trying to do even today. Uh, some with more success than others. In 1970, uh, one of the most famous uh, pieces on social responsibility appeared, uh, written by the late economist Milton Friedman from the University of Chicago. Uh, and he pointed out that social responsibility decisions are not in the best interest of the employer uh, when made at the expense of corporate profit. Essentially, he was from the rising tide floats all boats school and felt that uh, uh, particularly managers of corporations needed to be uh, focused on making a profit. That was their primary purpose and anything else uh, took away from that purpose. In 1970, uh, the year that I peg is kind of the beginning of uh, CSR, I call it CSR. Uh, 1.0, just uh, for those of you interested in the Wayback Machine, uh, this is a little bit of what happened in that year. Uh, some of us are old enough to remember these uh, in things. The, the pieces in green are, are particularly important in establishing kind of a baseline for CSR. Uh, the first Earth Day took place, the Clean Air Act uh, became law, and the EPA became a uh, government agency. Uh, interestingly enough, in today's context, uh, it became a government agency under the presidency of Richard Nixon, a Republican. You'll see at the bottom uh, some things about New Hampshire population and world population. And just watch those numbers over the next couple of slides. They're uh, part of the overall context. Ten years later, uh, we had uh, a bailout. Somebody given the talk about bailouts recently. People forget that we had one. 1980, a billion and a half dollar deal out of Chrysler, and other things were going on in the world. Most notably, I think, on that list for this discussion, the fact that CNN uh, launched at that time. That was kind of the digital component of globalization. Yeah, at the time, uh, I was uh, getting ready to be in the diplomatic world, and CNN really changed diplomacy forever. Uh, you didn't really have to rely on diplomats in the field to describe things going on when in Washington you could just turn on CNN. So that has been, uh, that's been extremely significant. In 1990, uh, you start to see some corporate activity uh, with Time Inc. merging with uh, Warner Communications to become Time Warner. Uh, McDonald's opened its first restaurant in Russia. Now, this is only 20 years ago. So when we talk about how fast things are moving, this is one of the reasons to, uh, to look at this, uh, this history. Nelson Mandela was released from prison and Iraq invades Kuwait. Some people have a hard time remembering that there was a first Gulf War before the one that's just ending. In the year 2000, AOL agreed to purchase Time Warner, uh, a, a deal uh, that invites commentary even today. Uh, PlayStation 2 was released, but I want to skip down.